Okay guys, sorry about the mistakes earlier. Um, it's quite hard to show you the structures um, n not being able to remove the mandible on this skull. It gets in the way. Um, so I'm sorry for the camera angles on the last video um, and a couple of mistakes I made because I was distracted. But we're now going to go through the internal view of the skull which will be a lot easier and we'll be able to see these structures much better than um, we could previously. So we're just going to review a few things. Um, the fossae of the cranium, we have the anterior, middle and posterior fossa. Um, the anterior and posterior are separated by the sphenoid ridge. Sorry, the anterior and the middle are separated by the sphenoid ridge and the middle and the posterior are separated by the petrous ridge or petrous ridges, we have two on each side. Um, going over some of the structures that we covered earlier, um, this is the cribriform plate separated by the cristogali. Um, the cribriform plate is quite delicate which is why when you intubate a patient we don't we push straight back, we don't go up. If we push the tube up we can cause a base of skull fracture through this delicate cribriform plate which can cause problems. So that's a cribriform plate. This area here is known as the cella tersica. Horse's saddle, kind of looks a bit like a saddle. The pituitary gland sits in here, the pituitary fossa. These are the anterior clinoid processes. This is the posterior clinoid processes. All together, the fossa, the processes, is collectively referred to as the cella tersica. Here we have the optic canals which cross over, the optic nerves come out and cross over just in front of the pituitary here. And then we have the the superior orbital fissure, just here, the foramen rotundum, which is this one, the foramen ovale, oval shaped, the foramen spinosum, the foramen lacerum, which I always remember because it's like lacerated shape, it's like a laceration as opposed to just a straight up hole. The um, internal acoustic maiatus on both sides. The jugular canal, just here. The hypoglossal canal and the foramen magnum. So they're all our foramina in the skull where and the main um, structures included. So we're now going to go over the cranial nerves and where they go. We have 12 cranial nerves and there's an easy way I have to remember them in order. There's other mnemonics that are rude, but this is my mnemonic. When old Oscar's tabletop, the feisty version gets vivacious and hot. In order, cranial nerve 1, olfactory, 2, um, optic, then ocular motor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibulocochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. So they're all the ones that. Um, that I know of and that's how I remember them. So going through now, where are these nerves and what are the related structures in the in internal cranium? Well the olfactory sits here by the cribriform plate. So when you breathe in through your nose, this is how this nerve can pick up the sense of smell. There's actually a bulb sitting here called the olfactory bulb. So the olfactory nerve comes and the end of it sits here. The optic goes through the optic canal is here. I'll turn the skull so you know where the optic canal comes. That's the optic canal right there. Optic canal. And then the ocular motor goes through the superior orbital fissure. Again turning the skull so you can see. Ocular motor. You can see right next to the optic canal there. So ocular motor goes through that superior orbital fissure. And there are other nerves that go through the superior orbital fissure, not just the ocular motor. The trochlear nerve also goes through, the abducens goes through, abducens does the abductor muscles of the eyes, the uh, mu uh, muscles that help the eyes look outwards. And we also have V1, which is the first branch of the trigeminal nerve um, going through there. Then we have the foramen rotundum, V2 goes through there, that's the second branch of the trigeminal nerve. And the third branch of the trigeminal nerve goes through the foramen ovale. No um, cranial nerve goes through the foramen spinosum. Um, the foramen lacerum also carries no cranial nerves, um, but does carry the um, 
internal carotid artery, I believe. The jugular foramen carries the glossopharyngeal nerve, the vagus nerve, and the accessory nerve through here, the jugular foramen. The hypoglossal canal, self-explanatory, carries the hypoglossal nerve. And I believe I've covered them all there, haven't I? Oh, olfactory, optic, ocular motor, trochlear, trigeminal, adducens, facial I haven't covered. Right, the facial and the vestibulocochlear actually go through the internal acoustic maltus. Both of them go through there. Um, so remember that. The facial comes out of the acoustic, external acoustic maltus, and it splits inside the parotid gland, it splits. And there's mnemonic to remember the splits, the branches of the facial nerve. Um, to Zanzibar by motor car is the one I use because it rhymes. To Zanzibar by motor car. Temporal, zygomatic branch, um, buccal branch, um, the mandibular branch, and the cervical branch, uh, the branches of the facial nerve. To Zanzibar by motor car, the five branches of the facial nerve. There's other mnemonics to remember it, read ones, I'm not going to say them. Um, another one, if you're a reggae fan, is Tell Ziggy Bob Marley Called. Um, you know, just look around on the internet, you'll find these mnemonics. So that's the facial, um, stibiocopia I've done, glossopharyngeal I've done, the vagus I believe I've done, the accessory in the hypoglossal. Um, yeah, that's all the... So, wow, that was a lot quicker than I expected. Brilliant. Any questions? Um, just email them. Um, Sam says bye.